There's something about them that's almost a mystique. They do have a, a special allure, attraction. I think it's because they do hark back to the history of things, and they're sort of romantic, sitting up there on a desolate coast and helping mariners find their way. Built in 1892, the Faro de Punta de Malabrigo is among the 24 lighthouses built in the Philippines during the Spanish colonial period. It has sat atop a lonely cliff for more than 100 years, a lone sentry along the desolate coast. Standing proud through fair and foul weather, it is a silent witness guiding mariners through the tight Verde Island passage of the San Bernardino Strait. Its light, a welcome beacon of trust for seafarers throughout the past century. According to records, construction of the lighthouse complex began in November of 1892. The Malambrigo Lighthouse follows the traditional design and layout of lighthouses of a time where a lighthouse keeper was actually required to live on the grounds to keep the lighthouse running. The complex is made up of the lighthouse tower itself, the pavilion, the service building, and the enclosed courtyard. The well-worn floorboards and doorways in the former living quarters of the lighthouse keeper hark back to an era in nautical history when time moved a little slower and things were done by hand. Back when the lighthouse keeper's job was to trim the lantern wicks and top off the fuel in the burners. Brass equipment was polished and lens glass was kept clear to make sure that the lighthouse served its purpose of guiding mariners safely through the local waters. The Malabrigo Lighthouse bears a dignity that only comes with years and years of faithful service. But with the advent of maintenance-free electronic equipment and GPS tracking, the need for a traditional lighthouse and a lighthouse keeper has largely disappeared, having become anachronisms in the modern world. Without a real practical need for anything more than a structure to house solar-powered equipment, graceful complexes like the Malabrigo Lighthouse are slowly deteriorating and would soon be forgotten if it wasn't for the efforts of concerned members of the Philippine Coast Guard Auxiliary. My name is James Marsh Thompson. I'm uh, a captain in the Philippine Coast Guard Auxiliary, which is, believe it or not, the, the largest NGO in the Philippines. One of its programs, the main programs are like the so-called Organic Coast Guard uh, Rescue pollution control, cleanup, that sort of thing. But there is also a very special program called the PCGA, Adopt a Lighthouse. It's a program which is aimed at preserving the 22 existing lighthouses built back in the Spanish era in the Philippines. Under the PCGA Adopt a Lighthouse program, anyone willing to take on the responsibility of preserving these historical structures can apply to become custodians of a piece of living history. Many of the lighthouses from the era are in poor shape, but some, like the Malabrigo Lighthouse, are just waiting for a second lease on life. We are in the process, though, of getting historic recognition for, we'll probably someday have it for all the lighthouses, but you have to work at it with the National Historical Institute, and we're getting that uh, accreditation for our Malabrigo Lighthouse. It's uh, in relatively good shape. It has a roof on it, which probably needs to be replaced, but, uh, and we've uh, got to fix up the other basic utilities and uh, other repairs, generally speaking, to make it, uh, if not habitable, usable but uh, basically a place in the province, a uh, glorious location. Ornate wrought iron fences surround the lighthouse complex, and more of the decorative ironwork can be seen echoed in the small architectural details of the former living quarters of the lighthouse keeper. Though the lighthouse tower itself is the architectural highlight of the complex. Remarkable in its all brick construction, the tower's lower third actually tapers inward acting as a buttress for the whole structure. An unusual construction method that has obviously proved itself over the test of time. 
Though the Malabrigo lighthouse is in relatively good shape on a whole, time and idle hands have sadly taken their toll on the once elegant structure. And many repairs are needed to bring it back to its former glory to once again take its place as a beacon for the local community as well as visitors to the area. The basics need uh, looking at. We've had a plan drawn up so that we would be able to create uh, probably five or six very usable spaces. The location in our case also required those steps uh, so that uh, I'd like people to be able to easily come up after they pull their banca up to the shore and uh, go up these steps and, and uh, have, a, have a wonderful experience. Have their picnic or uh, uh, come and uh, have a meeting or whatever might be the occasion. I think they're beautiful and even more important, they're suggestive of the Philippine heritage. I'm thinking that we've, we've got a chance to uh, not let, in a conservation sense, the, the buildings we can still repair, refurbish, fix them up and put them to some kind of more uh, modern use is very worth the effort. With their quiet strength and noble stillness, lighthouses have romanced writers, artists and poets for centuries. And now, long after they have outlived their practical use, they continue to capture our imagination as potent symbols of man's yearning to discover and light the way for those who will follow.